What's up guys, welcome back, thanks for watching. Today we are gonna do kind of a part two on a video that we did several months back called How Messy is a Contact Shotgun Blast? For those of you that don't know, a contact gunshot is when the muzzle of the firearm is touching the target it's being fired into, which obviously makes the result a little gnarlier than it would be otherwise. Last time we used a 12 gauge shotgun and a lot of you guys seem to like that video quite a bit, so I thought we would revisit it this time with a rifle. Now there are a ton of different rifles we could use for this video. Obviously the bigger the caliber, the more impressive it would be, but I don't think too many Barrett 50 cals have been used in these types of incidents. So for this one, I went with a good intermediate cartridge the 308. Now, my first choice for this video was the 556 because it is the most common rifle caliber by far. Everyone has an AR-15, but I went with the 308 because it's also very common and it's a little more powerful than the 556. Plus, most of my other rifles, including the ARs, all have muzzle brakes that divert gas pressure outward. This one does not, so it should make the result just a little more dramatic. So when you shoot a rifle or any firearm really, there is gas pressure that comes out of the barrel with the bullet. If you're more than a couple inches away from the target, it's not gonna inflict any damage because the gas just dissipates. But with contact gunshots, there's nowhere else for it to go but into the target, which is why they usually are a little more dramatic. First, I'm just gonna shoot the rifle a couple times and show you what I'm talking about. Then we'll shoot our intended target and look at the damage. We've got our 308 full metal jacket and I've got a slow-mo camera set up as well. Trick load, nailed it. There wasn't an obvious jump cut there. All right, let's shoot it. Hopefully you can see it. I was a little further forward than I wanted to be on the slow-mo camera, but it's pretty obvious there's a big muzzle blast coming out of this thing. Next up, I have a 150 grain Norma Hollow Point 308. I wanna try this and see if there's a noticeable difference. Whichever one has the biggest muzzle blast is probably the one I'll use in our test, so. Let's see. <laughs> It's kind of hard to tell with the naked eye. That is a heavier bullet going a little bit slower and it felt like it had slightly less recoil. Let's watch the slow-mo footage. Well, to me, it looked like the 147 grain full metal jacket ball round did have the bigger muzzle blast. The hollow point would probably break apart, maybe do a little bit more damage in the target, but I think I'm gonna use this one since it does appear to be slightly higher pressure, which is what we're going for. Hey guys, we gotta interrupt the video really quick to thank LAS Concealment for sponsoring today's video. So LAS Concealment makes really high quality holsters. I've been using them for a long time now and I feel very comfortable recommending these. Every time I carry appendix, I always go with LAS because they use a bungee system to attach the mag carrier to the holster which really allows it to form to the shape of your body without sacrificing stability. Precision form kydex for every firearm and light combination you can imagine, both inside the waistband and out, hundreds of different colors and patterns to choose from, and they even offer custom prints. Most importantly, they are made in America, high quality and combat tested overseas by special operations. So they've been put through the ringer as well. Go check them out. There will be a link down in the description box below as always. And again, thank you to LAS Concealment for sponsoring today's video. All right, guys, let's get to it. If you watched the last video, you probably already knew what our target was gonna be for this one. One of my all time favorites, a ballistic dummy lab human head. Now the 308 is definitely higher pressure than a 12 gauge shotgun, but it is a smaller caliber bullet. And I could be wrong, but I don't think the rifle will be quite as dramatic as the shotgun was because that was insane. Either way, we're about to find out. I have all of our supplies back there, so I'll go ahead and build our little mock-up shed. And with the magic of editing, we'll come back and see how big of a mess a contact rifle blast would actually make. A few moments later. All right, guys, we almost got her finished. I just wanted to show it to you before I put the final wall up so you can see what's going on. This is basically a six foot shed. Worst case scenario for a contact gunshot. 
if you're trying to keep the walls clean. We have our ballistic dummy head right here in the middle. I'm gonna put the fourth wall up, rig this thing with cameras, and then he's going down. Oh, and of course, since this is a messy science experiment, I am wearing the lab coat and the goggles. All right, I'm gonna leave this part of the shed open so the cameras can see it. I cut a little hole right there in the insulation for my gun barrel. Ballistic dummy head is screwed down and ready to go. Let's do it. I couldn't get a seal on my ear pro with the goggles, so we're back to the safety glasses. 308 full metal jacket, trick load. Hey, we got one. I'll take it. Let's do it. I was wrong. That was every bit as dramatic, if not more dramatic, than the 12 gauge shotgun. Wow, let's do it. Well, our GoPro's covered in fluid. You can see it dripping off the top there. I imagine this will probably be our best camera angle because it's the only one that could see the entire shit. So that was crazy. I don't know why I underestimated that so much, but I did not think it would be quite that dramatic. I mean, it's all over the entire thing, including the ceiling. So, wow. Here's the backsplash from where I actually pulled the trigger. Good thing I had that wall there because I would have been covered. I still am. I have stuff all over my jacket, but that definitely protected me. We've got ballistics gel stuck to the wall just all over this thing, but the two main pieces are right here. And it looks like that is probably where the bullet went through. And there is our ballistic dummy head. So obviously the top half is just completely gone, which I did expect that. I just didn't expect the combustion of the insides quite like we got. It is very similar to the shotgun, if not more dramatic, to be honest with you. All right, guys, well, I'll have to watch the footage back. Obviously, I don't know exactly what happened. I remember in the shotgun video, the contents of the ballistic dummy head just ejected straight upward into the ceiling. So I don't know if that happened with the 308 as well. I imagine it was pretty dramatic, whatever it was, because that stuff just ended up all over our six foot shed, so. The contact rifle blast was every bit as good as the 12 gauge shotgun. And this is a perfect example of why mobsters back in the day used 22 pistols, because you don't want a mess like this when you're trying to keep it a secret. <laughs> All right, guys, I have a pretty big mess to clean up, so I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this video. There's not much else to say, man. You guys saw the results. Contact rifle blasts are absolutely epic and way messier than I thought it would be. So hope you all enjoyed it. If you did, let me know down in the comments below. As always, hit the like button for me, guys. I'd really appreciate it. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time.